So the video that we're going to be doing today is deploying custom images with WDS as part of the Windows Server 2 demo series. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to customize the image and we're going to use the DISM tool for doing that. Once we have our customized image, then we're going to import that image into WDS and then we're going to deploy that target to another virtual machine. So let's dive in. So in this demo, we are going to be servicing a Windows Server 2012 R2 image with DISM. So as you can see, I've downloaded the install.wim, which is a file that we need to work with our images. So I've gotten that off of the source media. Now let's take a look at the PowerShell ISC. So what I've basically done is I've just put in all of the DISM commands that I'm going to utilize and I'm going to simply run those in the ISC. It's going to save me some typing and that way you can actually see what all of the commands are. So I'm going to raise this up here a little bit. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create the mount directory that I'm going to use for this. So we'll put in the directory path for that. We'll run that and we see that that's created that mount directory. And the next is we're going to get the information about the WIM file using the slash git dash WIM info. As you can see, that shows us all of the index numbers and the images included inside. So this is helpful because it allows us to get that index number, which we're going to use to determine which image we're going to mount from the WIM file. So we're going to take index one, which is the server standard core version of 2012 R2. So we'll go down to our next command, which is going to mount the WIM file. So we'll go ahead and let that run. That's going to take a little bit of time. So when we come back, the image will be mounted and then we can move on to actually working with adding a package to our image. Now we see that our image is mounted. So at this point, we can actually start working by adding a package. So I downloaded a package from Microsoft and put it in an updates folder. So we're gonna go ahead and add that package to our image. So it's gonna go through the process and basically process that and add that into our image. So we see that's completed successfully. So the next thing we're gonna do is act we're actually gonna add a role into our image. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to take a look at all of the roles that are available. So we can use the get dash services switch with DISM and that will give us a list of all of the roles that are available on our image. And it comes back with a huge list that you basically have to scroll through. So the feature name, as we see kind of right here, failover cluster dash full server, that's going to be the name that you would put in when you're installing a specific role. So as you can see here, I'm going to install the core file server and I added the slash all here because what that'll do is that'll make sure that it installs any parent roles and features that are needed for this. So we'll go ahead and run that. Oh. There we go. We'll try running that whole line again. And now it'll go and it'll actually service this offline and it'll enable those features inside. So we see operation was completed successfully. Now that we've finishing servicing, it's time to actually go in and unmount the whim and then commit those changes. So we'll go ahead and click run this and this will go through the process of committing all the changes, basically saving everything to the image file, and then it will unmount that whim. So this is going to take a little while. So we'll come back. And when we come back, the image will be unmounted and we can add that into WDS. So we'll go ahead and open up WDS from our tools menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into WDS. I'm going to go into the install images and I'm going to create a new Actually, I'm going to create a new image group and I'm going to call that WDS the demo. And then inside that, I'm going to add an install image. And so I'm going to go to the location. I happen to create this on the ADL DC MB under images. 
and there's my install.wim and we click next and we take a look at based on the names here we know that the top one here the standard core that's the image that I want I'm going to uncheck this because I'm going to give it a custom name so we're going to call this Windows Server 2012 R2 custom image and I'm going to use that both for the name and the description and then we'll click next and now this will go through the process of actually copying that custom image to my WDS server. So once that's finished, then it would actually be ready for me to roll out to my users. So while this is running, I'm gonna go into VMware Workstation. I'm gonna create a new virtual machine because we're gonna go ahead and deploy this image to a new VM. So we're gonna choose next here. I've got my server 2012 threshold, which is the same as R2. And then I'm gonna simply call this demo WDS deploy one and you just put it to the location of wherever you'd put that on your USB drive and click next and we'll click finish so that creates the new virtual machine for us so what we're going to do for our VM is we're going to power on to firmware so that I'll power on the virtual machine into the BIOS and we're going to change the BIOS boot order so that we make sure that it always uses network boot. And this is a great way to ensure that you actually get it to the network boot screen and it doesn't skip that process. So I'm going to go over here to my server, we'll click finish, and then I'm just going to quick verify on the properties for my Pixie response that required administrative approval is checked, which it is. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a multicast transmission for our install. So I'm just going to call that demo and then I'm going to choose my image group and we'll choose the install.wim that we want. Click next, set it to autocast and finish. So that'll be running in the background for us. So we'll go over to our client here and then that should boot into we do an F12 and now it's going to the point of it's contacting the server so at this point I'm going to go back to my WDS server we'll go to pending devices and then we'll go up to and name and approve if you remember with name and approve what that will do is that will name the server and it'll ensure that it actually gets added into the domain when we go through um, when it goes through the build process so we'll go back over and we see that it's going through the process for loading the image so what it's going to do is it's going to boot in the into the boot.wim file and it's going to give us the opportunity to basically connect with the wds server so we're going to put in our credentials once those credentials are authenticated then it'll pro provide us a list of all of the images that we have available for us to install so still going into setup so this can take a couple of minutes so once this comes up then we'll be ready to go so here we are at the screen so we'll click next and that's going to prompt us for some credentials so we'll put in Don Funk at contoso99.com. We'll put in our password. And then it will give us the list of all of the operating systems that we have available. So we'll go all the way to the bottom. We see that we've got our custom image. So we click next. And at this point, it simply goes through the process that we're normally used to for installing Windows. So at this point, it'll go through the process and connect with the server. And once it's connected, it'll start copying down the Windows file and it will complete the installation of your operating system. So that is deploying an image with WDS.